by a 65-year-old programming language. Major systems from banking, insurance, and government depend on this programming language, which is one big dark horse. What's it it's called? called COBOL. And Okay, so it's called COBOL, guys. And I brought 20 additional facts about COBOL code and programming language that is not mentioned in this video. But she did such a good job that I still wanted you to see a few scenes from this. But don't go anywhere because I have 20 additional facts that the 60-year-old coding language uh, can help you guys in your everyday projects. Hardly anyone speaks about it or even knows how to use it. And the entire story behind COBOL it's pretty cool. The year was 1959, and computers at that time were actually the opposite of this. I know, right? They were huge, clunky, and not very functional. But Look at it, man. Imagine trying to stay up all night and doing you know what on a computer like that. <laughs> they couldn't even do nothing with that. Even more interesting, the programming languages at that time had two issues. The first issue was that they just weren't portable. Computer programs in 1959 were actually written in machine code or assembler, and wow. they had to be rewritten for each new computer. Now, there yeah. were, in fact, other programming languages that were portable at the time, like Fortran. However, these were all science-based, and they used quite a lot of mathematical symbols, so it became hard to read. And the second issue with programming languages back in the day was the cost programming was costly okay it was extremely costly matter of fact there's a couple people in the comments that said they know how to use COBOL programming so that's kind of cool but the first five uh things not mentioned in this video i want you guys to write these down after you subscribe all right because it took me a lot of work to dig these uh facts up for you guys all right so subscribe right anyway COBOL stands for common business oriented language specifically created to handle business data processing needs rather than scientific or mathematical computations so it's not just a general uh programming language is specific for business data processing now number two COBOL is known for its longevity and resilience is one of the longest standing programming languages still in active use okay so she didn't make that up you can still find it in everyday uh products and stuff like that okay number three syntax of COBOL is verbose and descriptive which was intentional as it is allowed non-programmers and business personnel to understand the code more easily. So basically people like me. <laughs> okay, number four, COBOL used a fixed column format, a characteristic of, a, uh, of older programming languages uh, that require code to be written in specific columns, much like Fortran. So she just mentioned Fortran as well. That's another one that's super old. Okay, number five, it is uh, one of the first languages to, to support file handling directly with the language, making it ideal for business data applications that need uh, robust input output operations. So as you can see, this code is specific for business. This is not just general, like I said before. Okay, guys, so let's keep going. Really costly. There was a survey done in 1959, and it found out that any data processing that needed to be implemented, the programming cost totaled $800,000. And if you wanted to make existing programs run on new hardware, well, that would set you back $600,000. That's crazy. So a computer programmer named Mary Kay Howes, excuse the pronunciation, she was really tired of these high programming costs and really complicated programming languages. So she had a computer, meeting yeah. with some important people. And in that meeting, they asked the United States Department of Defense, the DOD, to sponsor a project to create a common business language. And you might ask, well, why on earth was the Department of Defense even in that meeting? Why were they interested? Well, the Department of Defense was also tired of the state of programming languages at the time. They were pumping money into their tech. At hey, what if I told you that oh, you can get a digital man. miner that actually makes Come daily profit? At the time, the Department of Defense actually had 225 computers with more on order. And, and they had spent right? almost $200 million on implementing programs that's to actually crazy. run them. So they formed a committee and they sponsored the project. And the goal of the project was to create a common programming language for business. Almost one programming language to rule them all. 
Okay. So the committee wanted to develop a programming language and they wanted this programming language to be different. They wanted this language to have three main features. Feature number one is that the language should be easy to use and work in a wide variety of environments. All right, so now is the part where they start to make it a little bit more general, uh, easier to use for like people like me, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> I'm not a like pro developer or anything like that. I, I use a little bit of no code AI to build things that I want to build and everything. So um, I'm in a journey of uh, learning a little bit more about more sophisticated coding techniques and everything. This is why I'm reacting to her. She seems to be one of the authorities on this topic, guys. Tell me what you guys know about her from banking to governments to insurance to healthcare. Feature number two is that the language should be designed to handle huge amounts of data on a large scale. And feature number three, probably the most important feature, they wanted a language where the syntax was made to resemble everyday English. And this would make it much more easier for non-specialists to understand the language and start learning it. And this was revolutionary at the time. To give you an example, here is a code snippet of COBOL. And immediately you can see how this almost looks like an English sentence, which is weirdly <laughs> formatted. For yeah. comparison, the script on Python would look like this. And with those three features, COBOL was born. Okay, that's cool. So now let me give you six through 10 uh, facts that she does not include in this video. Okay, so COBOL's emphasis on backward compatibility has helped ensure that code written decades ago can still run on modern mainframes without modification. So they built it for longevity. It's an everlasting code. You understand what I'm saying? <laughs> this is crazy. Okay, number seven, COBOL's design prioritized readability over brevity. Unlike languages like Python or Java, COBOL code can um, take more lines, but is clearer than uh, for the untrained eye. Basically, people like me can read it and understanding. So it's kind of like, uh, uh, <laughs> like she said, it's, it's not that different from a regular sentence when you read the code, okay? So number eight, COBOL introduced structured programming features in the 1970s, which was a significant update to encourage modular code organization making programs easier to manage. Okay, so there was no matrix code, look, okay. Nine, COBOL supports an arithmetic code uh, called PAC decimal, specifically designed to handle business-related numeric calculations more efficiently than standard floating point arithmetic. Okay, then we got 10, then we'll get back to it. Okay, so now this one is it's kind of crazy, okay? So there are over 200 billion lines of COBOL code still in use worldwide, managing trillions of dollars of transactions daily. Because remember, this is mainly for business and stuff. Wow. So we got a 60-year-old code managing all of our money. <laughs> crazy. So the timeline here was that COBOL was developed in 1959. By mid-60s, COBOL was widely used by many major institutions. And by 1970, COBOL had become the most widely used programming language of that time. And it was designed to handle large yeah, amounts of data come from? at a large scale. So back in the day, it was perfect to handle massive systems like your financial records and transactions. And with that, it became really popular in banking and insurance. Okay. So popular that even in 2024, COBOL is still being used in banking and finance. That's okay. crazy. So it's your bank right now. <laughs> I mean, I believe it. I believe it because them banks uh, be looking dusty, in their website. According to Reuters, 43% of banking systems are built on COBOL. 80% of in-person transactions use COBOL. And a whopping 95% of ATM swipes rely on COBOL. And That's crazy. So when you go to the ATM, you're using COBOL. Okay, COBOL programming is happening with this ATM. When you go and you do an in-person transaction at the bank, is using COBOL. If you do it online on their website, probably on PayPal or Cash App or one of these mugs too, 
is probably still using COBOL. That's crazy. It's not only present in the finance industry. According to some blogs, more than 60% of records and databases in the US healthcare system are COBOL based, which leads to the next point. Any business that is currently using COBOL today is actually doing so because they don't have any other choice. You'll notice that many companies that use COBOL are old, large scale corp. I wonder if it's a possibility to create a brand new programming language using AI. You know, <laughs> AI can, um, you know, create websites it can create apps using existing code so that means it it pretty much understands programming languages so i wonder could you create a brand new programming language using uh claude ai because claude ai seems to be the leader in the the code ai you know platforms and stuff like that or maybe you have to combine chat gpt with claude ai hmm i might do a video on that trying to figure out like how to create a brand new programming language. Operations, banks, the IRS, insurance companies, these aren't small businesses. So let's imagine a scenario. Let's say you're a Python developer and you work for a bank. The bank is old, it's been there for a while, like most banks. And because the bank is old, all of their business processes are on COBOL. Obviously when the company started developing these systems, Back in the day, COBOL was the number one programming language to use. And now when you look at the bank processes, you find similar processes and millions and millions of lines of COBOL. So as the new Python developer, you just need to change 10,000 lines of COBOL into the corresponding Python code. However, all of these 10,000 lines of COBOL are for a bank. So you'll be working <laughs> with transactions. Sounds easy enough, right? All you have to do is just change all these lines of code. <laughs> what if you're somebody like me, man? That's crazy. Okay, um, let's see. Okay, so we got number 11, guys. Stay with me. Make sure you do a, a subscription for me, all right? All right, so number 11, COBOL programmers have traditionally been in high demand for Y2K compliance due to data storage and older code. This surge highlighted the need to retain and update legacy systems. Uh, number 12, COBOL code can be found on more than just mainframes. It's been adapted to run on cloud platforms, Windows, Unix, and other Linux systems. That's crazy. So it's in the cloud, man. This is like Skynet or something, okay? 13, IBM offers... Uh, uh, offers COBOL compiler for its ZOS operating system, uh, ensuring that COBOL continues to be supported on one of the most robust mainframe platforms in the world. Number 14, then we got one more. Number 14 is the language is particularly strong in handling large back processing operations. Yeah, so like when you need to send out a bulk invoice or something like that. There's probably COBOL handling that, okay? Commonly used in banking and payroll, uh, payroll systems where numerous transactions need processing at once. Yeah, so I was right. See, I get this a little bit, y'all. All right, I told you I'm a beginner. All right, number 15, COBOL can interface with SQL uh, for database queries, allowing it to interact with modern database management systems while running on older infrastructure. So it's cold. This code is cold. You understand? That's why it's never needed to really, really mutate or evolve. <laughs> okay. Um, 16. No, 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 no. We get back to it. Calculations for fees and interests. Loan formulas. And if you get this wrong, if you write this incorrectly, your mistake could cost a lot of money. And the bank <laughs> probably just doesn't want to take that risk. That's the other it costs. issue is... If you think about coding etiquette back in the day, there probably wasn't much. So those millions and millions of lines of COBOL that belong to the bank, they probably aren't 100% documented. I mean, how many new companies do you know today with processes that still aren't documented? And not to mention that this the latest weather forecast on, app for man. 2024. This app not only has radar, can predict the weather. And not to mention that the software engineers who actually developed the processes and wrote the code, chances are they retired or they're probably. <laughs> and because of this, it actually makes sense that banks and large corporations would be so reluctant to actually make this change from COBOL 
to a new programming language. And these corporations would woman. need to make sure that the people responsible for maintaining and upscaling the COBOL code are really experienced and don't make mistakes. <laughs> so who actually works on COBOL now, since it's a language that is not too popular or too trendy? According to the latest stats, the average COBOL developer is around 45 to 55 years old. And like I said, COBOL just isn't a popular language today. And okay so this is a problem then that's what i'm saying we need a brand new programming language then if everybody's already in their late 40s early 50s that uh, know this language if you said that like majority of um majority of what do you call it majority of the businesses and the tech is still ran on cobalt today and you only got this tiny percentage of people that know how to do this code and that's dangerous because once they fall off or pass away, how the hell are we gonna handle our money? You understand? So before all that happens, uh, there are two options. Start back training the newer generations on COBOL. I mean, that's how you fix that. Or <laughs> create a, a brand new programming language and that's gonna take hella money and hella time to switch all of these financial institutions over to the new programming language. So it would probably be easier just to like train the new wave on COBOL for now. In fact, many people used to criticize it quite badly. Often, COBOL is considered a language that is very difficult to learn and maintain. But to be honest, I don't know why it gets a lot of hate. It's an old language, and yes, it does have its disadvantages, but it's been doing pretty well. While I was doing my research, a lot of COBOL developers actually disagree with COBOL being hard. They say it's just the archaic systems and processes that actually make it hard and not the language itself. This was in the Experience Dev subreddit. Someone asked, who is replacing the COBOL developers who are retiring or dying? And one person- And that's just what I just said, right? Posted. What I found is that if you can pick up Python, you can certainly pick up COBOL very quickly. Where things- Okay, so the solution to that is for those uh, kids or students that are interested in Python, it should be combined in the same class. So if they're going to some type of coding boot camp or something like that for Python, it should be mandatory for uh, that to become part of the curriculum. That's how you solve that situation right there. If it's similar to Python, then it won't confuse them or throw them off. You can actually uh, train them on that at the same time. Okay, so number 16 says uh, government agencies heavily rely on COBOL, especially in the U.S., um, where systems in the Social Security Administration, IRS, and Department of Veteran Affairs use it. Uh, number 17, COBOL code bases often use custom-built tools developed in-house to handle tasks like debugging, programming, uh, uh, performance optimization, and database interaction. Number 18, watch this one, MicroFocus COBOL is a widely used commercial COBOL solution that has enhanced COBOL's capabilities for modern development environments. That's what I'm saying. So if you got kids already learning Python, then they should go ahead and combine that skill with COBOL. Be, you know, the Bible say don't blend the old with the new, you understand? But uh, in this situation right here, if they're not going to create a brand new programming language for the financial institutions and governments and stuff then some new generation need to learn this man all right so um let me see 19 it says COBOL doesn't support object oriented programming natively uh, though later extensions introduce limited support for double o principles but is not widely adopted all right, number 20, COBOL programs can run across various hardware platforms, maintaining a high level of portability due to its long history of standardiza standardization. Um, so guys, like that is 20 things not mentioned in this video right here. Um, go ahead and do a Jet Li sidekick to the subscription button and an unbox flying knee kick Muay Thai style to the share button. Love you guys.